<clears throat> Are you there, Tracy? Yep, I'm here, Tim. How are you? I'm good. How many people are you expecting? Just a couple more? Yeah, there won't be many. Uh, hopefully, uh, Mark Maggi, uh, Katie Dugan, oh. yep. and Paul Carlson. I think that's it. Okay. Do you want me to wait and let them in, or do you know how to? I know how to let them in. If you want to just turn it over to me, I'm happy to do it. Okay, great. Have a good meeting. Hold on. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate it. You're welcome. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, sir. It's Katie Dugan. Oh, hi, Katie. Have you signed in? I have. Um, it looks like you have been made the um, head of the webinar. That means you have to let us each participant in. Yeah, I do. So um, yeah. I don't see you yet. Yep. Um, All right. So I, don't, I see there are two participants, but I think that's just. Uh, if you click on us, or you see like three little, you see like three little dots next to our name. No, Sometimes if you click on that, you should be able to promote us to participant. Well, uh, I see. I don't. I don't. I see participants, and I okay. see, I clicked on that, and uh, all I see is myself. So, uh, 
I don't know what uh, I can invite people, but yeah, that's funny. It's not. Uh, it's not not showing not showing anybody here. Okay, let me try logging back out, Tim, and see okay. if I can come at it a different way. Because it, however, I came in, it showed me as a. Okay, at least if I can, I can get on as a member. All right. Okay. I'll call back if I have problems. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Bye. Hey, Mark. Hey, Tim, how are you? Good. Uh, are you, uh, I don't see you as a video participant. Are you, are you not videoing? I don't know why I wouldn't be on my iPad like I always do these meetings. Yeah, I, I know. Well, uh, I'm gonna promote you to a panelist and see what happens. Let's see if that helps. Yeah. Okay, uh, you're now promoted as a panelist, but I still don't. There you are. Here, here I am. There you thanks are. For, okay. Thanks for the promotion. What do I get you with it? You're, you're promoted as a panelist, and you're also uh, you're on video, so that's good. And I, and, uh, I'm solo. I'm solo parenting here these days. My wife's traveling for work, so if there's background noise, that's my kids. Oh, uh, that's okay. And I see you're getting your run in too. So you're uh, you're getting plenty of miles. 20 miles, yeah. Boston was uh, two weeks ago, so had a good race there and uh, back at it now. Oh, good. Good. How'd you do? Good. I was happy. I ran a 247, which was uh, oh, the same cool. exact time as my first Boston 11 years ago. So I'm not getting any faster, but I'm not getting any slower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Katie, are you there? I see you coming in. I'm there here. You are. There you are. I promoted you as a panelist. I don't know whether that had anything to do with it, but uh, yeah, anyway. I think uh, I don't know. I came in on the different <laughs> link, and who knows? It all worked out. I don't, I don't, here we are. I, uh, hopefully, Paul is going to join us. Uh, unfortunately, Don had a death in the family. I think that uh, he had to deal with, so he can't. He couldn't join us, and. Uh, of course, uh, Paula is gone uh, this week. Uh, so it's, it may just be the three of us. <laughs> okay. But uh, anyway, I, uh, uh, I did make a, a very short pitch to uh, the community at town meeting, uh, just uh, giving, the, giving everybody an idea that things were still on track and uh, we were keeping our eye on it and keeping our eye on the select board to make sure that they were uh, uh, sticking to it. So I think that's a good thing to do. Uh, I also think that uh, an annual report to the select board is a good thing to do. I think probably we should do that after the new select board comes in. Yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, uh, the. Uh, my sense is the select board is a is a little bit uh, <laughs> contentious to say the least. Uh, there are some of the players there. I don't know who's going to come in, uh, who will be there when uh, Kerry is going off. Uh, I don't know who will be the other uh, members, but hopefully uh, that'll be a. Uh, a, a group that we can work with. I, I assume it will be. I think Corey will probably be chair next year. Um, and he's somebody I think we can work with. So, uh, so that'll be good. We'll, yeah. we'll, know in a, we'll know in a week or so. so we will indeed. Anyway. I hope, I hope they consider us pretty non-controversial. Uh, I think we're non-controversial for now. I think, um, Paul yeah. Grady's, I think if Paul Grady wins and Paul Grady hears about 50% uh, of the roll off, 
going to OPEB versus um, other priorities. I think that will be a conversation for sure. But we're still we're still years out from that, so I think we're we're okay on that front. Yeah, I, Paul won't be there when that comes. Uh, yeah, he could win and be gone again before he gets there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think as long as we keep it, uh, you know, basically keep focused on the agreement that the select board has. And at the moment, it's not costing anybody anything. There's nothing they can do to change it. I think we'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, and. And for the first time in a while, we have some good news. I mean, part of the reason I brought up this chart was the fact that um, the liability is actually back down to 56 million in this actuarial report, thanks to more favorable um, forecasting in terms of actuarial assumptions in terms of medical trend rates. So the bouncing balls bounce back down, which is never a bad thing for us. Um, which I thought was a nice message um, to share. Yeah. Um, I also like the fact that the discount rate is kind of moderated a little bit. Like we saw this big decrease, which kind of hurt us, but now this year it's at 2.44. So I, I feel like perhaps we've sort of hit steady state for a little bit in terms of the negative discount rate changes. Um, which is also positive news. Um, well, and then I, I think that's, that's going to continue to go up, Katie, I suspect. You know, discount rate, I think, will track, uh, track interest rates. And, uh, and I think interest rates, I mean, tomorrow the Fed is going to boost it by uh, 50 basis points, I suspect. So I, I think that will trend back up. Um, well, the, the way that they calculate it is based on that weird formula in terms of the number of funded years that we have. So it's not a normal discount rate as you got, as we would think that uses a WAC, which takes into account municipal bond rates. Yeah. It, it has that, um, it's bifurcated so that you get a favorable discount rate for the years that you're fully funded. And then the long, I forget what they're using. Um, I think it's the municipal bond rate at the back end, but either way, um, it's a little bit, it's not your normal, but it, does, it to your point, Tim, if, if the municipal bond rate goes up, it will potentially um, impact us. Um, yeah. But in the short term, there's sort of the, the rate that they use for the funded years. Yeah. I thought I, the the best really, news good, really good news, I think, is that uh, two things. One is that our uh, that the town is sticking with the, you know, five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year to the trust fund. The trust fund is going up, uh, and also the investments in the last year have done well uh, uh, because the market would was <laughs> did well. Uh, I suspect that uh, uh, this time next year we will be looking at uh, less favorable uh, uh, appreciation, but. As long as it doesn't go down, I think we're going to be fine. And yeah, I mean, the, that's if the beginning balance, excuse me, the ending balance last year was a scooch under four million. Um, the ending balance for June twenty twenty one was um, six six million. So yeah. to your point, um, favorable investment. Yeah. I haven't seen the returns um, report. So maybe one of the things that we can do as a follow-up to this is have Paula give us the report that shows the um, the rates of return for the last year for Bartholomew and Pritt. I thought I sent those out. She did send them, but I think it would be good to have a conversation with her. I'll, I'll check Katie and see. Uh, I thought I'd sent them out to everybody, but... Um, uh, the returns are good. Uh, the returns are good. I think, I think it's important for us to understand uh, how these funds are investment vested. Um, you know, I made a big push a couple of years ago to, uh, to have the, the, the funding overweight uh, equities and underweight uh, uh, fixed income just because of the nature of this fund, we're not gonna, we're not gonna use this fund. 
Uh, the only purpose of this fund is to grow. Uh, and over time, equities basically do better than fixed income. So that's what my push is. I think we're, we're moved up to somewhere around 70, 30 as a uh, equity versus fixed income. I forget exactly what it is, but it, it's pushed up. And I would continue to uh, urge us to move it further up. I mean, uh, the OPEB policy sets the guideline of 60 to 90. Um, you know, I think we're, you know, in the 70s. But, uh, you know, I personally, for the funds that I'm not using to live on, are 100% equities. And while I, on a down year like this, you know, this certainly this part of this year is going to be down. I'm going to, you know, in terms of <laughs> looking at my portfolio, it's going to be down, but then, you know, guess what? It'll come back again. So that, that's generally my philosophy and I'm certainly willing to listen to others. I'm not sure you all have the same investment philosophy I have, but anyway, that's where we are. Um. You know, I, I would love to see that report. I'm sure that Paula has completed it. Um, I forget exactly what the format was, um, but it's something that she does on an annual basis. So my guess is that she could easily pull that down um, if it's not already in your inbox and circulate well, it. I'll look for it. And then if I can't find it, Katie, uh, she's gone for... I think a week or so, she's gone to bring her daughter back from North Carolina or South Carolina or somewhere. Mm. But when she gets back, we'll, uh, I think we should have another session. And uh, I'd like to have Paul Carlson involved with that uh, as well. I don't know why he's not here today, but uh, maybe I have to, I'll probably have to uh, help him get on this, but mm. I, okay. I'll see him. I'll see him on Sunday and I'll mention to him that we'd like to have him come to these meetings. <laughs> so, but you're right, let's, let's take a good look at that. Yeah. Um, and I'd be happy to go in the meantime and sort of just preliminarily update our report. Um, I think I have most of the information. I think the one piece that I'm missing is really that investment block at the bottom, but I could probably update almost everything else in here just based on the actuarial report okay. um, and a that, little ping, ping from ping yeah. back and forth with, uh, with Don. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, and I will, uh, tomorrow's gonna be a crazy day for me, but uh, I will dig up what I got from Paula and send it out uh, to you so you have it. Okay. Uh, and if- and Hey, what's the update here? We gotta add. Do we have another year to add to this? Yeah, so this is last year's report. Right, right. So this is through 2020 and we have the actual report through 2021. So that's where the chart that's up now, it would go from 72 back down to 56 here. Yeah. Um, and the trust fund goes up to six something. The, the trust fund goes up from that three nine to six. Um, yeah. Right now your x-axis is conveniently uh, odd, even numbered years, so we're going to be ending in an odd number of years, so you can figure your, you can play with Excel and figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 um, every time I go into Excel, um, I find that they've moved things around on me. Oh, totally. I just got converted to whatever, Office 365, and I was like, and I, I love working with people that are good at Excel, because I'm like, can you make this look nice for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> like the chart, the chart function blows my mind every time I go in there. I'm sure if you use it on a regular basis, it's like second nature. But I'm like, oh my god, this is painful. Um, yeah, you I can't. You think that's hard? I just got an electric car, and everything is different. I can't drive it. I, I had a hard time getting into my garage. <laughs> what'd you get, Tim? What'd you get? I got the Audi e-tron. Oh, very cool. My neighbor across the street is cross shopping that and the uh, the Mustang, the Ford Mustang Mach E. Yeah. Um, so, I've yeah. seen the Mustang. It's a good looking car. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a car guy. And when I found out Ford was naming their four door electric crossover a Mustang. I'm like, boy, that's kind of sacrilegious to the Mustang name. I understand why I did it because that brand name has so much cachet. Um, yeah. 
But it's a it's a good looking it's a good looking four door with a cashback SUV crossover whatever you call it. It's pretty sharp looking. It, yeah. it, it, looks, it looks nothing like a Mustang, but I when I when I saw one, I was like, that's a nice car. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. a friend of mine friend of mine had it an Etron on lease. He gave it up and bought a Mustang. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. There you go. Uh, interesting. So he could have made money if he just he just kept it, you know, if he bought it off lease and then resold it, he could have made probably, it. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. In today's market, um, a lightly used vehicle. <laughs> I know. That's why I was up at uh, Coastal Auto on three. I get an oil change in my wife's car, and their parking lot is full of boats these days. The, the, I was talking to the guy, Doug, who owns it. He said, I, ca I can't get cars to sell, so I'm buying boats and selling boats. I know. <laughs> Do you know Tom Norton? Uh, Tom owns uh, owns that. Anyway, he said he's a good guy. Uh, I'm selling my Audi A6 to him because he's paying me more than Audi would on a trade-in. Oh, <laughs> oh <100%. I'm> sure. <laughs> I got a new I got a new pickup truck just before COVID in fall of 2019. So it's two years old with 27,000. We did a ton of skiing this winter with it, 20, almost 30,000 miles. And the dealer will give me almost what I paid for it two years ago with nearly thirty thousand dollars, which is which is great. I'd love to sell it back to, but there's nothing yeah. they have at the lot that I could buy. So it's like, all right, I have a bunch of cash in my pocket. What can I do with it? Yeah, now, Katie, Katie, you drive a Tesla, right? I drive a Tesla. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm looking in my car. I'm looking for the button that I push that it drives itself. Doesn't Tesla have one of those buttons? I haven't found that button in mine yet. You know, I have um, I have a very staunch believer in driving my own car. Good for, good for you, Katie. Good for you. I, I have not ever done the self-drive feature. Um, in fact, it's not even enabled in my car. Um, I feel like Elon Musk is using the entire world as a bit of a beta test for his self-driving feature, and uh, I'm glad that you're not part of it, Katie. No, um, but they do. But they do. Um, we we joke because it's a. Uh, we joke there's a little bit of a California car because they've got these um, all of the the controls for like the defroster and a whole things are are buried in sub menus for if you live in California would never need to go to your defroster on like a regular basis and so I'm like forever like fiddling the screen to try and get to my defroster I'm like you know what this so we call it um California wipers because it's just yeah. like it's funny there's a couple things I love the car but there's a couple things that annoy me and mostly it has to do with like inclement weather controls <laughs> like not what you need to that's be. absolutely California I remember the last time I was out in LA it happened to be raining one morning and it was like the headline of the news that you turn to the news it's like it's raining outside I was like okay it was like, <laughs> it, but it was like it was like the only thing people were talking about it was like yeah, a plane exactly. like, like uh, yeah could not handle it um yeah. Okay, so Katie, um, you'll, uh, you'll do kind of a, a draft on a report. That'd be great. Yeah, I, I guess the, um, and I didn't pay attention to this year's budget cycle, Tim. I know things were tight um, in part because the schools um, came in with some significant asks that I think were pared back, but I didn't look and see what was actually funded in the operating budget. I know there was money, yeah. But I don't know how much for the um, OPEB liability. Do you have the town warrant around? Yeah, uh, I I had the warrant. I've got the the town report here, uh, and it should be in here. It was it was three something. Um, because uh, so I know that we completed the 530,000 that we yes. had as the target. So next year's target for FY23 is 546, 364. Um, and I would just be curious to see how much they put in the operating budget versus how much they're expecting to come out of okay. free cash flow in the fall. Uh, 20 Okay, they're talking free cash, one hundred eighty-four fifty for twenty twenty or twenty-two, and that goes up in twenty-three to one ninety-six three sixty-four. So that's a projection, but twenty twenty-two is one eighty. Yeah, um, let me see if I can find town warrant annual town meeting. I had a warrant here, but I. I think I probably 
Actually, I think I just found it. Hold on. I probably rejected it. Because I did not stay to the end of town meeting. Mm. I actually, I actually did not even attend this year. I couldn't. I noticed that, Katie. You were you were conspicuously ab absent. You know, I've got a couple calls on it, but I I felt like <laughs> I needed. To, I honestly needed to give myself a mental break. I I, I'll be honest. I could not um, <laughs> handle listening to some folks. I was absent from town. My wife Monday was our re-entry the beginning of our return to work and my wife was traveling yeah and the kids were in school we were so desperate for a babysitter on monday morning because i had to get to boston and my wife was traveling we had the dog sitter drive our kids to school monday morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah you definitely have to take a, a pass when you're in that kind of straits when you're just trying to get the kids to school had a uh, separate sitter to bring them home so i was looking yeah. at trying to track down a third sitter for monday evening i was like this is as part of an advisory committee i, I feel like i had done my part so i emailed rob and mary and said hey We've done our work as advisory. I'm not going to go make time meeting and find my kids a third sitter for the day. Yeah. Well, I can assure you didn't miss a whole lot. Well, well that's good. Um, <laughs> now that's uh, there. It's got 87 in free cash. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's different than what's in the uh, unless that's a third. Uh, Maybe the one in other, the, No, here. Uh, th ignore this part up here. I'm not quite. Sure. I. Uh, maybe that's an additional. I think. Okay, there's the 190. There's the 196. I think that's the figure. That um, 196. So. So where's the other 110? If 87.5 is free cash, where's the other 109? So I think what they're doing this year, so just um, ignore the top for a second. I think what they're doing is here, they're taking 196, 364 out of the operating budget and putting it in the OPEB trust fund. And that happened on Monday night at town meeting. Yeah. To hit our target, that means that we're gonna to have to get another 350,000 from free cash flow at special town meeting. I think that's what they're planning on is 350 from special town meeting in the fall. And we appropriated on Monday night, 364 at annual town meeting to get to our target number of 546. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's the way the math is working. That, that sounds reasonable. Um, and, and, and Don is, is basically doing what he had promised, he, he is doing what he had promised us, which is he's holding the free cash flow number pretty constant at 350. And he's putting the increase, the annual increase that we kind of built in to keep up with um, wages into the operating budget. So that's why it went from 180 to 196. It's up to 212. So I think he's, a, you know, he's not. He's not back ending it. Let's put it that way, and trying to get the increase out of out of free cash flow. He's putting the increase into the operating budget, which is good. Right, which is more predictable and reliable because we don't want to be solely dependent on free cash. Because exactly. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, uh, one of the uh, one of the articles that did not pass was Lee Jenkins and his group that had uh, uh, wanted to have. They had a citizens petition to move basically to take free cash at the end of the year and move it uh, or to have have that be voted on by uh, the town. Yeah, well, if it was over a certain amount, right? I remember we talked about over, this- Over a million bucks, yeah. Anything over, yeah, it, it seemed like, I said this on advisory, it seemed like a solution in search of a problem. Like exactly. we had never had this issue and we, no one really understood where it was coming from or why this was an area of concern. Um, so yeah. Well, I, I, I think he just, he was, he was trying, I, I don't know what he was trying to do. I mean, uh, you know, Lee Jenkins is an interesting guy and so is his wife, but uh, Lee likes- Well, that was the interesting thing when he was presenting before advisory a couple of times, yeah. he was presenting, but there was this female voice in the background that was very clearly feeding him lines. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that stays that stays between the three of us, but it's like, who are we being presented to here? Like, there's like a, yeah. But anyway, it was clearly voted down. I mean, nobody else. Uh, the select board didn't want it. Uh, 
Uh, advisory didn't want it, so it, it got voted down. So I think we're I think we're good. Um, I, I think it's a good conservative budgeting process that we have in town now, and uh, which means that we do have free cash at the end of the year. So uh, I think that's healthy. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, hopefully we can stick to this plan. And it and the good news is that we have, and it's and I guess the I haven't I, for some reason I'm fumbling with the actuarial report and I can't find the percent. Um, fully funded um, to see if it's gone up, but presumably it has if the liability has gone down. <laughs> There's no reason to, to think that the, the percent fully funded isn't going to be a nice, it was at 5% in our last report. I think it's going to be sh show something very nice, um, which is fantastic. <laughs> well, yeah, it, uh, it, it, has gone, it has gone up. I think uh, our date still is uh, pensions will be fully funded in 2030, and then another 10 years later, OPED will be fully funded. I mean, that's kind of the general uh, uh, strategy that we're looking at here. Uh, the the pensions, there's nobody can, as far as I can tell, nobody can change what we're doing with the pensions. So that's going to continue to roll on. Uh, the only issue. Uh, if anybody's really paying attention in 2030, <clears throat> uh, when that rolls off, then 50% goes to OPEB and 50% goes to whatever other. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of other that will be getting their hands out uh, looking for that. Uh, my guess is it won't go to reduce property taxes. <laughs> as much as I like that to happen, it's not as, gonna- As much as you want it to happen, it probably yeah. won't. Yeah. I actually think I found the number. If you guys fact check me, yeah. I'm like, uh, all right. See, it's page nine of this. I think it's right here um, in terms of the so fiduciary net position as a percentage of total OPEB liability. I think that's the fully funded number. Does that sound right to you? Um. Yeah, that should be that should be about right. Uh, you know, the way I mean, our OPEB liability is is less less than. Uh, okay, I see. All right, the net is fifty six. Net OPEB liability fifty six, and so we've got uh, uh, funding of of almost nine percent. So that yeah, that, I mean that that, that math check because six point yeah. two million would be ten percent. So. Yeah. Yeah, 5.5 .5 million would be 8.9%. That makes sense. That sounds, okay. Sounds, sounds right. And, and that's, uh, that's healthy given where we were coming from. Uh, and as long as, you know, that's going to fluctuate, uh, the actuarial variables that go into these numbers are mind boggling. But oh, I think they, we were well below 5%, right? I think we were in like the 2 to 3% range. Well, when yeah, we started we... this whole thing years ago, we were at zero. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've well, come a long way. Uh, no question. Well, let me look. Um, let's see if I can zoom. Because maybe there's another trend discussion here. I don't know if I can easily find it. So, la um, in terms of trend line, in 20. 20, the fully funded rate was 5.1%. In 2021, our most recent, it's 89 And I don't know off the top of my head what the fully funded was in 2019. Let me see if I can find it. Good news is that these reports, they don't change their format. So maybe yeah. it'll still be on page nine. <laughs> <laughs> Or do a control do a control F. That's what I always do. Yeah. Of course they moved it this, this year. Let's see. Oh, um, it was it was um the liability was so when our liability was last 56 million, it was 5.6% fully funded. Um our liability is back to 56 million net, but our percent fully funded is 8.9. So um, that just shows the fact that we've been 
saving against liability. And we've been getting an investment return that, that we've been able to go up, um, you know, close to over three um, percentage points on the same liability within a two year period. I think the other thing that, that uh, uh, we need to make clear to the uh, community at large is that because we have this plan in place, it significantly impacts our credit rating. If, if we did not have this in place, our credit rating would not be triple, triple A. Uh, so uh, just, just the fact that this, this is in place um, is, is really helping us. It's saving us money on any, any bond issue, any interest that we, any debt with it, we, we borrow. So that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. Yeah. All right, well, maybe if I can figure out um, the Excel charting functionality, I'll try and add a little, um, a little line graph um, next to it that shows the fully funded ratio, just so people get a sense of we're making progress relative to the fully funded ratio over the period of time that we've had this, um, we've had this funding policy in place. That'd be good. You know, the, 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 the liability is a bit of a bouncing ball, as we know, um, based on actuarial assumptions, but the one thing we can control is our own funding, and that has made progress relative to the overall liability. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. okay, well, that's, that's great, Katie. Uh, okay. One thing while I have it in mind, uh, do you have, do either you or Mark have any idea, any thoughts on who we can get on the committee to replace uh, Donna? Anybody that would, uh, <laughs> it's kind of an esoteric uh, uh, committee. Do you but, think Brian Host would rejoin? I mean, it's a it's a very light lift um, from what it was and he's super knowledgeable. Yeah, so I can ask fun. him. Yeah. I can ask him. Uh, you know, Brian and I are uh, joined at the hip on a number of projects. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to him uh, virtually every day. Uh, so I'll ask him, that's a good idea. And uh, he is very knowledgeable and he, well, he, he's, he's overloaded at the moment. Although now that uh, the budget is gone, he's, you know, capital budget can kind of take a breath, uh, but uh, he's actively involved in the Friends of Bassing speech, uh, mm. trying to keep the Harbor uh, conserved and preserved and, out of the situate grasps. So, uh, but I will talk to him about that, Katie. That's a good idea. And if you come up with any other ideas and Mark, if you think of anybody, uh, yeah. let me know and uh, we'll try to do it. I think Katie, you're right that it is a fairly light lift. And I, I think it's a important thing to do and, and uh, make sure we have people that will continue on. Yeah. Good. Well, listen, um, if I think of anybody else, I'll certainly, I'll certainly holler. I think that is probably the biggest selling point is that right now it's, it's more of a compliance and monitoring um, than it is a, a, you need to meet on a regular basis. So that is a, that's a big selling point for all of us, I'm sure. <laughs> <In> our... <laughs> it is indeed. It is indeed. And actually, uh, even though I had a little trouble getting everybody on here, uh, uh, Tracy entrusted me to be the <laughs> to be the person who was on the moderator or whatever. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's good that we were able to do it. Um, yeah. But all right. Well, that's great. Well, thank you both. I appreciate it. And Katie, thank you for doing that. Um, yeah. Look forward to seeing it. And I will. Uh, I'll look for the stuff that Paula sent me and send it out to you. Yeah, and why don't we use my update as a trigger to schedule a meeting with Paula and with um, Don in, a, in a, a couple of weeks just to kind of get them to sign off and put on that report and then we can get scheduled in front of the select board. That sounds good. Let's. Okay. Let's... Yeah, works for me. Okay, thank okay. you. Take awesome care. Guys. All right, Take care. thanks. Bye. Bye.